and welcome back to Crafty Quilt and Designs. I hope you're well and having a fantastic day. I have a beautiful quilt to show to you. This is it behind me. It is a four patch kaleidoscope and it's a quilt as you go. I'm so excited to show you how to do this. We're going to get started immediately. Short welcome to the new subscribers. Thank you for joining me and welcome to my old subscribers. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. I can, cannot wait to show you how to make this. So damn gorgeous, so damn easy. Let's get started. All right guys, so today I'm going to show you how to make four patches kaleidoscope, all right? So I have my fabric already opened up here. I just wanna make some myself some room. And um, you're going to be needing your measuring tape and your long ruler and a very sharp rotary kind of blade. And you will also need some flat pins, all right? Some flat head pins, okay? Right, so um, what I have done, first of all, is to make sure that my fabric is lovely and smooth and wrinkle-free. That's important because you don't want to cut the fabric when it's wrinkled. The same rules apply for cutting fabric. Make sure it's ironed, all right? The next thing that's different is that we're going to fold the fabric on the longer grain, so the lengthwise grain, um, salvage to salvage, okay? So not the short area over here, so the long. So you can see this is the back and this is the front, all right? Um, so it is folded up here. Okay, now in order to do the four patches kaleidoscope, what you need to identify on any fabric you're going to use is where the fabric repeats is. Now the same applies if you're doing a circular kaleidoscope, whether it be six or whether it be eight. The same um, rules apply. The only difference here is that we will be making them into four patches, all right? So I have my fabric rolled out here and I'm going to find where the repeat is in the print, okay? Now, it is just roses. The type of fabric you need to look for to do a kaleidoscope, you need lots of movement within the fabric, all right? So I'll get another one and show you what I mean. So I have this one here. As you can see, there is big prints, there's small prints, it's leaves and some kind of flowers. I think this has the name of, as it at the bottom, what is it, what is it, what is it, what is it? I don't know. Anyway, this is a, jo a Jocelyn Proust um, fabric. So, um, you need lots of movement. So you can see those leaves go in all sorts of different ways, etc. All right, so as long as there's lots of movement, you're good to go. You don't want to choose a fabric where the print is really small. So let me show you something again, like for example, For example, this one here. The prints here are too small, okay? And even though as I look at it in the camera, it looks like a really beautiful pattern from my angle here. When I look at it too small, it's, when I look at it, it's too small for um, a kaleidoscope. It's beautiful for something else, but not a kaleidoscope um, that you want, okay? The reason being is that once you cut it, it will look the same. All right, now another way of actually finding out whether or not the fabric you have chosen is the right fabric is to get a two-sided mirror, put it down, and you will be able to see that kaleidoscope pattern if you're ever in doubt, all right? Okay, so let's go back to choosing or working out where the print actually is or the print repeat is in the fabric you're using. So what I'm going to do is to choose an area on my fabric where I want to measure. That's what the measuring tape is for. Now what I will do is to zoom in a little bit closer, hopefully you'll be able to pick it up, where the repeat is, all right? So for example, I'm going to start at the end over here and um, it is not very sh straight and that's not a big deal. Before I start to cut, I will definitely straighten that edge. And I am not going to start my repeat right on the edge either, okay? Now when you're choosing the print, 
okay, that you want to start the repeat, i.e. the pattern, you need to find something that you'll be able to pick up quite easily in the next one and the next one and the next one because it's the same pinpoint you are going to be using to find the repeat. I hope I'm making sense to you. So I am going to choose, let's just say right in the middle of the flower, okay? And I'm gonna come in a little bit closer, but I'll demonstrate from a distance for now. So right in the middle of the flower, to the middle of the big flower again on, 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 on the print here. All right, so I'm gonna go right in the middle of the flower. Oh, the measuring tape is upside down, that's a wonderful start. Okay, right in the middle of the flower, to the middle there, and that tells me it's five inches, okay? So that's the first repeat. I'm gonna go from this one now to this one here. Again, it's telling me it's five repeat. Now, just because I like to double check and double check, I'm going to choose another point on the flower, or I'm gonna choose this leaf right here, okay? So I'm gonna go to the tip of the leaf, to the tip of the other one, and yet again, it tells me it is five inches, okay? So, right, I've checked twice, so I know my repeats are five inches on this print. Now, what I need to do now is to work out what I want to cut my blocks in. So do I wanna cut my blocks four inches, five inches, exactly what it is? So what that means is that every strip of fabric is going to be five inches. So once I cut my first strip of fabric so I cut from the middle of the flower to that middle of the flower I know that is my five inches in between there okay and then I would use that same cut over and over again now you'll be wondering well how many strips do I actually need but that is down to you and how many patches you want to make okay we will be cutting these into four inches squared so it doesn't really matter that even if I cut it at five inches, I just know I've got a little bit of trimming to do. And that is not a problem because I will trim them all together. Now, in order to make my four patches, I need four strips stuck together, all right? So what I'm going to work at now, I'm going to bring the camera closer to myself or closer to here so you can actually see what I'm referring to and then we're going to cut them down. So hopefully you'll get a much more clearer idea on what I'm referring to. So I'm gonna choose these two flowers here. So from the end here to the next end is five inches. If I go from the middle of that blue spot there to the middle of this blue spot here, it is still five inches, all right? So that is where my repeat is. My repeat is every five inches. So what I need to do is to work out how many strips I want. As I said, I want four. So I am going to count. Taking my big ruler now. And I'm going to zoom back out so you can have a little bit of a clearer picture. So I've just folded the fabric up so that I have room to show you within the screen. So I fold that over just for demonstration purposes. And this is my raw edge here. So I'm going to choose a flower that's not really close to the end because it's already cut on this side. So I'm gonna go with this one here. So I'm gonna measure, because I want the whole flower within the cut, I'm going to start with this one that hopefully you can see. I'm going to start at the end of this flower here to the end of or the start of the other flower. Okay, so from there to there. So my first cut is going to be just right along there. Okay, and right along there. So I'm just going to count for now. So I want so that's one, that's one strip. Move that over. So I'm just averaging here at the moment, okay? So holding that point to the next one, that's my second strip, two. And fill that over so that I know. Three. Four, okay? 
so I'm just gonna roll out enough fabric so that I can have eight strips in total so I know that's where my four strips comes so I'm just gonna fill that roll that out again so from there I know that's my four five six seven eight so at the eight I'm going to cut right in between there so I'm going to zoom back out so that hopefully you can get a clearer picture of what I'm referring to So remember my fabric is folded here it is 44 inches in width I have already worked out where I want to cut okay so remember when I do cut I will be cutting for two all right so I'm gonna work my, myself back this way now because I want to have eight strips in total so I'm gonna count from the edge of the fabric here sorry to edge of the rows to the edge there so that is five inches that's one two three four five six seven eight right so I've got a little bit of extra to play with so what I'm going to do is to just simply cut using my scissors I don't want to cut too much what you can do is just take a little bit of a pen or a pin which is what I should do so I don't waste the fabric because you know I hate wasting the fabric so I'm just measuring I know where it is visually so that's one two three four five six seven eight right I'm gonna move one down I'm gonna start here I think that was way too much one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, beautiful. Okay, so that's cut. I'm going to put the rest of so all I'm going to do now is simply just work with one. So I'm going to open it up. Remember it's fold salvage to salvage from the lengthwise grain. I'm going to cut it in half. At this stage, if you want, you can tear or you can cut with your scissors or rotary cutter. I'm going to use my scissors not this one because I don't really like it. It was the closest one to my hand. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut down. If you wanna rip, by all means, you can go right ahead, but I'm not gonna worry with that today. I'm gonna take my time and cut it. We're only going to work with one at a time. So this is how you know how much blocks you will most likely get out of it. And you're not wasting the fabric this way. Now, when you make this, it's going to come about very quickly. You're going to be so surprised how easy this is. You really are. So easy. So at this stage, if you haven't ironed, I would say this is the time to do it. I'm so afraid of those scissors, I tell you. One time they actually dropped near my feet. Oh, my heart skip a beat, <laughs> I tell you. It is so sharp and it's pointy. It literally stood right up on in the ground. 
I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, that was a light bulb moment. All right, so I'm going to fold or turn my my mat. Okay, so let me just say this now before I start cutting. I think I said it already. So irregardless of where your repeats are, you can cut the width as long. What the, you can cut it to the four patch size that you want. It doesn't really matter. It could be a six inch strip, a seven inch, a seven and a half. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is here is after you've cut that first strip, you put it exactly where the next strip is going to start. That's the most important thing. All right. Remember, this is not about fussy cutting. It is simply using the stripper fabric to work out where you want to cut. So I'm going to get my pins now because at this stage, I was just kind of eyeballing it. So I'm making sure I have definitely eight strips in here. But now I need to make sure I am precise when I cut those strips. All right. So I'm going to measure yet again where my five inches starts and stop. Remember, I'm using the edge of the rows. It doesn't matter which edge you, you use. It could be the top, the middle edge, the side, as long as whatever point you use on one rose is the same point you use on the other rows and the other pattern, okay? It doesn't really matter. As long as you measure the same pain point visually. So I'm gonna use my pin so I'm going to start right there to there. So I'm just going to put a little, you can use a little marker if you want. When I say that a pen or something so that you know. All right, so I'm going to put my ruler down and I think I'm going to get a pen. Now the reason why I said use flat head pins is because when you put the ruler down, and the ball headed pins, the ruler won't move, all right? So I'm just gonna mark it. And typical, I've picked up a red pen. That doesn't help, does it? All right. Armed with my pen. Okay, so I'm just gonna move that because it's easier if I use a, a marking tool. To the next one there. And I'm going to make my first cut. Now remember at this stage, I am not marking whether or not it is, it's a four inches. Remember, I want my blocks to be cut into four inches strips. I'm not worried about that at the moment. At this point, I'm just making my first cut so I know what I want to do. Okay, so I know what my strips are going to be like. So, I sit there on the marker. Okay. And I'm going to find the next point now, which is right there. So this is my first strip here. So what I'm going to do now is take my very first strip and put it exactly, and I'm going to bring it closer, camera closer again, exactly on top of my fabric, literally exactly. So let me zoom in again so you can see what I'm doing. All right, this is the strip here. Let me just bring the cam, the ruler down in the shot so you can see that. Right, lovely. So this is a strip, this is the fabric. I'm not moving anything. I'm just literally taking the first strip and putting it on top of that previous. It must lined up so that you would not be able to see a different 
transition to the other one it should look the same as though it hasn't been cut at all so before I do my next cut I am just going to check that everything lines up there at every point every rose every leaf everything looks like it is a proper transition to the next one nothing must be changed Okay, you must not be able to see whereby the fabric has come down a little bit, it's moved. Okay, it must be the exact same cut, literally. Right, I'm just double checking here. Now, this is not a, a process whereby you rush it. Okay, no rushing at this stage. You take your time. However long you need to take, you take your time, literally. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just give that a little pin there so it doesn't move. Double check yet again that it's fine. Now I'm only pinning on the piece that is going to be removed. I'm not pinning on that side because on this side is where I will be putting the ruler. The pins are on this side, so top and bottom. And again, before I move on, I'm just checking that it is lovely and straight. The rose cut lines up with the previous one. So I'm putting my ruler down. Now what some people tend to do is to use this cut as their start, the scrap, but I don't do that. Because to me it's scrap and I don't want it to throw me off. So I like to take the first strip, put it exactly on the fabric and then I can cut. Okay, so that is two. I'm going to do the same thing again. Move the fabric. So it's okay to move the fabric. Nothing's wrong with that. The important thing here is that you line it up. Remember, we need eight strips in total because I've already averaged out, making sure I have enough room to give me eight. Because if I wanted 12, I would have rolled the fabric out longer. Okay? Remember, me rolling the fabric out only is um, done so that I know how many repeats of strips I want. That's it basically. Once you have the strips sizes work out, as I said, you can do two inch, three inch, four inch. So for example, even if I want to, which I will be doing, trimming this down into four inches, all right? That's all I'll be doing. So again, I'm going to take this again, and put it exactly on top. And this is another way of checking that your second strip was exactly the same. So line it all up yet again, making sure everything falls nicely and equally. No rushing. Don't do this at the stage whereby you feel like you have to rush. Just take your time. Ease the fabric so that it lines up beautifully. What I love about this is that there's no stress. It's just so easy to do. You just take your time, lay the fabric on top, double check that it lines up beautifully before you do your cut. And you will see, and hence the reason why you pick prints that has movement on it, so that you can actually see if the movement is not correct or not. All right? I'm using my same pins. I'm not taking any other pin. This first pin I started with, I'm just removing and pinning again. Again, once I've pinned, again, I'm going to double check I haven't moved it. Right, get my ruler. This is going to be my third strip down. And I'm not, I'm just putting it close by because I know the blade is thin, right? I'm not putting it on top of the previous cut, I'm just putting it close to the cut so that I know I'm not trimming this one, but I'm just cutting. 
because the blade is thin it's literally going to go right in between there and you just hold it nice and firm at this stage again double check that you've done it correctly you press down three okay do the same thing again lift it up match it up yet again what you want when you finish is to look at the edges and see all of those fabrics cuts have lined up equally okay that is what we're aiming at i'm just going to move this down because i need more room and notice how i did that i literally held everything together and moved it so nothing is being out of sync and even if it is i'm going to double check that it's done properly so again i'm lining it up i'm going to pin i've lined up my first leaf there so i'm going to pin because i know I've, I've done that right so i'm going to line that up shimmy the fabric making sure Look, I can see my leaves there automatically lined up nicely. This one here, this tiny one, the curve of the rose has made a whole new rose yet again. Okay, so once that's done and I'm happy with it, break my ruler. And I'm simply going to trim it off yet again. Right, that's my fourth cut. So I will cut the rest later because I only need eight to start with and I now can get eight, another four from the balance here. So what I'm going to do is to bring the camera close in yet again so you can see that all of these cuts have lined up beautifully. So... If I just kind of shimmy it down, so if I move it there, you should be able to see all of those roses cut the same way, those four cuts there, let's move this one apart. So you can see that there, look at that. All right, so it's quite easy to do, very, very easy to do. No stress at all. So I'm going to do another four like this, and for every other fabric, that I choose to do for this quilt, I'm going to use the same method. All right, all of the cuts are going to be the same and they are going to be four patches. All right, so I'm gonna continue with this and I'll show you what to do. So I'm not gonna move this at the moment because I need to um, cut this down into four inches. So I'm just gonna leave this for now and continue with my next set so I can have eight strips in total. All right, guys, so what I have done now is cut all of the strips. And so what I have done is to pin them. So I've again stacked the rows because I had to move one to actually show you. So this is the same one I actually opened up so that you can actually see how it was cut evenly, okay? So I've pinned it again. What I have done though is find points on the strip of fabric that I you know, want to pick up in each of the print. All right, so I've taken my flathead pin and I've pinned, I've pinned the heads of the, the pin towards the mat so it's not laying on the fabric. All right, and um, I have pinned in certain points along one side of the strips, okay? Now, my strip here is five inches. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to cut it down into four. Now, you can do this in two ways. You can make your four patch, um, you can cut it up as it is, and then you can cut the block down, but I want to stick to the size right now so that I don't have to trim down or anything like that. And then if I cut it to five, I may not necessarily get the five squares okay or the amount of squares that i am working with all right so i've pinned it on one side but all i'm going to do is just literally kind of shake it up 
just so that the fabric just kind of settles nicely and everything is even and you know just shimmy it back into place because you know when you pin fabric it leaves a little bit of a ripple so I'm just setting it back down and the reason why I've pinned this along this side and only one pin on this side is because I'm going to trim away on the side that doesn't really have any pins so I'm making sure that everything on this side is marked and stacked properly um, and then I'm going to take away the one inch on the other side. So I'm going to turn it this way. And in this case, I'm going to line it up on the cutting mat. <clears throat> Just making sure all those fabric meets. That's very important because we want when we cut our kaleidoscopes they're all meet the exact same place so again I'm just making sure remember this is not a rushing process it's quite easy it is nothing difficult you're just cutting it a little bit more carefully than you would normally all right and you're using your pins to pinpoint where you want to, to cut so I've laid it up on one line here all the way down and I'm simply going to just cut one inch off. As I, you know already, it's a five inch strip. So I'm gonna put it right there and just simply cut. All right, so that's scraps now. Okay, I'm still going to leave it pinned and I'm just gonna turn and I'm going to start literally to cut into my four inches. All right, so I'm just going to trim just a little bit off here so I have a nice clean cut to start with. I know that I can get five groups of four inches here. I've worked it all out. So I'm not worried about trimming a little bit off. All right, so I've started there at the half mark, and so I'm going to do one, two, three and a half, and that's four. And I'm just going to take my time and continue with all of that. I'm still going to leave them pin. So half, one, two, three and a half makes me four. If the pin's in your way, then you'll have to move it like this one here is in my way. I'm going to move it. gonna move those out the way for now so that's half again one two three and a half This one again is in my way, so I'll move that out gently so I don't shift it. And again, cut my four inch and just move it slightly there. And I could recognize that I moved it slightly because I saw that the fabric was a little bit higher. It had a ripple, so it was easy to actually catch that. And hence the reason why you leave it pin. Yeah. All right, so again, that's a little bit of scraps there. Okay, so I have five. So I'm going to open up one or two, and you can actually see what it looks like. All right, so I'm just going to start with this one. So I'm going to put it out as it is, so you can see all of the cuts are the same. All right, and so one of the great things about doing the four patch and kaleidoscope is that you have four sides to actually make your kaleidoscope from all right so you can choose um, the more dominant um, as you can see there's a rose here or you can choose something less if your fabric has a lot of space in it be mindful that um, you can either miss that space or you can cut it and then obviously you will just have space for your kaleidoscope. So again, these are just informed decisions that you can make depending on the fabric you're using. 
but let's go for this one here let's start with that one here so all I'm doing is turning it so that all of the shapes meet in the middle okay and that's really nice Let me turn it the other way and that's really lovely there so you can see that that looks really beautiful okay let's try another one and see I'll turn that remember you can get four layouts so you can obviously choose which one you want and um, you can grow attached to them also <laughs> okay oh I think I chose the wrong one there you go that's pretty love that too very nice you see the pattern outside and a little bit bunch of flowers in the middle okay um, and you can keep going but I'm going to leave that one there let's look at another one okay um, let's go with let's go with this one here take the pin out and again I'm just going to separate it so you can see that it's the same cuts all right so it's the same all together all right so you can go with let's try the smaller one in the middle first and all you're doing is just putting those same prints together in the middle to see what you actually get oh I like that you get all of those small little flowers in the middle there that's really pretty and um, let's try the bigger flowers and see what we get so just keep turning it till you get the visual that looks really nice love that love that you get the flowers and then you get the smaller flowers going all the way around get you get the the little small flowers in the middle plus the leaves falling hopefully you can make it out there it's really really lovely loving that really really nice pattern that and the great thing about this is that when you look at the fabric normally you don't see this is the fabric here this is the extra half of the fabric here you don't see any of those shapes all you just see is rows of the roses but when you put it in a four patch kaleidoscope you can see all these different variations so that's pretty nice so that's the idea of it let me show you a, 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 another set that i've done so far just for different um, fabric. I was going to fold. I do like this one, so I am going to. What I tend to do, if I find one that I like, I tend to just pin it, so then I know I don't have to go turn in again to decide um, on, and I just lay it on top of each other like that. You can chain piece these as well. It goes together very, very easily. Okay, you sewing together as though it's normal. Um, four patch so let me show you some of these ones here that I've done for the quilt so you have this one here that's really lovely and another one very nice okay let me show you this one as well So you can just play around with your fabrics and then you'll have lots and lots of four patch kaleidoscopes. So I'm going to um, start to lay this out and then I'll show you where my um, mind is going with the layout. But before I do that, I will definitely sew together. So basically take all of them, lay them out just to confirm to yourself that it is um, the same cuts, all right? And then you can decide on which you want. Now let's look at one here with just the leaves in the middle and see what we actually get. So that's just the small leaves in the middle because these leaves are just random. And that's, that is not too bad also. Not too bad at all. That's pretty cool absolutely pretty cool so even with the smaller print on the fabrics you can still get something looking really nice 
all right guys so i'm going to start to sew them together i don't necessarily think i need to show you how to sew the four patches together but um it's as normal okay do bear in mind though that any small tiny sort of print in the middle here will disappear okay so let me show you one of these ones here so let me show you this one here so for example as you can see there that would have been a little bit bigger the red dot in the middle there where the flower burst out but obviously um because it's a four patch you would lose it never mind even if it was a triangular kaleidoscope you still would have lost um within the seam allowance anyway so it doesn't really matter okay this one is definitely a shortcut the the whole advantage of this is that you are saving yourself time you are not cutting um into you know that triangular shape you're not cutting six or eight you're literally cutting four and it's a lot more simplified and you can still get kaleidoscopes out of it and you don't have to buy a special ruler you can use your same ruler that you use for quilting and notice a lot of my quilts i just use one ruler i very very rarely do i actually use a specialized ruler very very rarely okay i have them but i always like to challenge myself in just using the ruler i think it's just a little bit more creative if you use just one ruler because then it really allows you to grow as a quilter all right guys so i'm going to start sewing I think I'm gonna keep this one I love that and then um, I will come up with some layouts and I'll show you what I've thought about Alright guys, so what I've done for the quilt top, I've, I did not um, stitch it together as one whole quilt top, I've done it as a quilt as you go, or oh, I will be doing it as a quilt as you go. So I'm going to be doing it in two halves, alright? So in total you're going to have four rows on each, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So six across and four down on one okay so this is just half of the quilt top here and i usually do my quilt as you go in rows of two or three etc so this is going to be a quilt as you go in rows of two so i'm going to i'm going to sew it onto the batting so this is the first half here now what i am going to do is to um, remember where my joining area is because of the layout I had to ensure that um, when I do put it together as a whole, as a quote as you go, I need to be mindful of which part I need to be joining. So in order to remind me, I have just stick some pins at the top here so that um, I could remember that this area here is where I'm joining the other one too. All right, so this is my joining area here. So this is my middle and this is my top on the bottom of my quilt top i hope that makes sense so what i'm going to do now rather than just sew this onto the quilt top as is i'm going to add my first border which is my inner border or my floater border and i'm then going to add my last border so i'm going to add two borders on so what i'm going to do is first sew from the top here or from the length side i'm going to add that one on there then add the other one onto this side here and then I am going to add on another one at the top all right so I'm literally bordering half of my quilt top and um, so that is easier for me to put the whole thing onto the batting and then I'll do the same for the last border so let me show you what that looks like so this is my batting here as you can see and I've already added on the borders and 
for that for the, for the whole half of the quilt top I've now added on to the batting so as I roll it out you'll be able to see that so this is what I'm referring to here where I said I have added on my first border here so I added on this side first on both ends okay and then I added on um, the top the top cream border so that it makes that shape there so essentially what I'm really doing is making the whole quilt top in one go and then add it on to the batting all right and then I've added on my last border okay so what I'm going to do now is cut the um, backing fabric to the exact same size because it's already trimmed from the border to the batting is already trimmed so I am now going to add on my backing fabric so I'm going to turn this around like so <clears throat> all right so now I can then add on my backing fabric which is going to be wrong sides together so I'm going to have the wrong side of my backing fabric and the right side facing up okay so even though if it extends beyond the batting which is fine or beyond the quilt top is fine that's not an issue we want to make sure that we have enough to go all the way around it so all I'm going to do now is to simply just check that the front is literally in the middle of the back end fabric and I have excess all around okay now what you need to be mindful of if you're going to be using this quilt as you go technique um, is that we need to have an extra bit now I'm just going to flip this over so that you can see what I'm referring to here now you see how easy it is to handle when you're doing the quilt as you go in two halves okay it's a lot more easier to handle the quilt top it's you know it's not excessive you don't have to worry about throwing it over your shoulder to quilt it and this will quilt so much more easily than having the whole quilt top to be rolled or to be tucked over your shoulder when you're actually quilting now what I wanted to explain here is that this is where I'm going to be joining the other half of the quilt top all right so remember I said on this one here I have already added some pins at the bottom which reminds me where the joining goes so the pins remind me that this goes to this basically all right so if I just want to lay that out there you will see that it automatically lines up nicely okay now what I wanted to make sure that is understood here is that the reason why you need to ensure especially on the cut edge where you'll be joining you need to ensure that you have at least an inch of the backing fabric so that you can fold it over so let's pretend for a minute I'm just going to fold it down here and try and create a an inch away from that edge so once I have quilted this I need to ensure I have excess inch there the reason being is that I when I put my two pieces together all right I can literally fold it over to create a seam line on the other side so by this stage I would be like this okay and I will have the other one and all I'm going to be doing is creating a seam line folding over the raw edge because I will join these two together all right and then I will have an excess here to cover that raw edge okay I will show you that process when the time comes or I'll show you the end results I also have previous videos where I've done it already and it's a lot more detailed than this one but that is the idea of how I'm going to go ahead and do this as a quilt as you go as you can see I've already basted so just glue based the whole half of the quilt top so that it's easier so I'm going to baste this now the backing on and then I'm going to start quilting it basically okay and then I'll do the other side and join them together and the quilt will be completed then all right so I want to get started on that now so 
So the four patch kaleidoscope is now completed. This quilt measures 56 by 68. Beautiful throw signs. As you can see, I use a cream border around it. And as you know, I created this as a quilt as you go in two rows. Now if I go in a little bit closer, you can actually see where the rows were joined together. I will point it out to you. So there is where the rows were joined together. Now the kaleidoscopes themselves look absolutely gorgeous. What I was so amazed about is that when you look at each of the kaleidoscopes, ideally, normally you would not have seen any of these designs in the layout of the whole fabric. But because it comes together as a kaleidoscope, you can see all these beautiful individual patterns. Absolutely gorgeous. Just so beautiful. I mean, where was that design on the whole layout of the fabric? Really, really gorgeous. And as you know, if you're using this technique of using a four patch, you have four areas in which you can make your kaleidoscopes from. So this has come together very beautiful guys. Really, really lovely and easy. This is something that you can do. I promise you, you can do this. This is not difficult. Look at that one there. Look at the tiny little pattern in the middle. Just so beautiful. Really, really is. Look at that. You get those four points and that turning or that spinning flower. Look at that one there. Just absolutely gorgeous. This is something you can do. This is not difficult. On the back, I used a butterfly print. And if I go in very closely, you can see the printing. Now what I love about this print at the back is that it allows you to hide that joining there. And I have to go really closely for you to see it. Now, if you want to use my technique of using a quilt as you go, I would definitely say go with a pattern that's really floral at the back so that you can lose the, the seam if you want to. If you're looking at the front, you can't see it. And that's what I mean by that. Just really gorgeous, guys. Now on the borders, I did a cream border, again, just to really frame that quilt so that you can focus on those kaleidoscopes. And at the end, I used the same red fabric that I use for the kaleidoscopes here on the border. And I think that just really pulls it together. I did swirls for the quilting. And so you cannot really see it because obviously it's a really vibrant, colorful print. I also use gold threading to actually do the quilting. And on the cream border, I just did arcs all the time. What I want you to take heed of also is that I fussy cut the border here. And if you notice, all of the rows are literally in the same line. And I've done that for even the side there as well. It is not printed zigzag, and that's the way I cut the fabric, just to ensure I got that same line of roses all around the border. So all in all, this has come together really beautifully, guys. I really do hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Do like and subscribe. Definitely give me a thumbs up for this one. This is a beautiful one. And I've always wanted to make a kaleidoscope quilt. And I decided was to do a full patch. And I think this has worked really beautifully. This is something you can do. I promise you, you're going to enjoy the process making all of these beautiful plants go. So with that being said guys, do like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a message for me, let me know what you think about the full patch kaleidoscope quilt as you go quilt and I shall see you next week. Bye for now, happy quilting and enjoy the tutorial. Oh and by the way guys, this is also a free download for you so if you'd like to make this particular quilt, please click on the pattern down below 
and it's all yours just for free and you can have it you can make it let me know what you think bye and happy quilting once again